Nós saudamos a toda a igreja, a todos amados irmãos, a queridos. Desejamos a todos a paz do Senhor Jesus. Amém. Meus amados, nesta noite é especial para nós, a prova é o Senhor e a igreja ela pudesse participar de um momento onde estaremos neste instante falando sobre o recurso que a Palavra de Deus nos traz, que é o sacerdócio universal do crente. Uh, we're going to speak about a resource, which is the priesthood of the Christians. I invite the church to stand up. We're going to open up the Bible. Those in the church that can, can read the word of the Lord. That will be projected on the screen. The verse that we're going to read is the letter to the Hebrews. Hebrews 4. We're going to read from Hebrews 4 from verse 14. 14, 15, 16. Let's read together, my brethren. Let's read together. Together with the entire church. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive Mary and find grace to help us in our time of need. Said the word of the Lord. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Amen. The church may sit down. My beloved, when it is regarding this topic of, of the priesthood of the Christian, universal priesthood of the Christian, I'd like to remind that to, this month we are celebrating the birthday, the anniversary of what was the uh, Protestant Reformation of the 16th century. But we want to glorify the Lord as a church because the Christian Church Maranatha is completed also there 50 years where the work of the Holy Spirit was established in our midst. Blessed be the Lord. When we speak of the work of the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit doesn't have 50 years. The work is eternal, uh, but it was pleasing to the Lord 50 years ago to reveal the project of the Lord. Therefore, this topic is extremely important for the church in the moment in which we live. Univer universal priesthood of the Christian. We're going to speak here about the celebration that is that takes place about the uh, Protestant Reformation of the 16th century. It's important to say, my beloved, just to, so you can have uh, your bearings of when those facts happened. The Middle, uh, middle Age, the church stopped being a prophetic church to became prophetic instead of uh, re remaining the, the church stopped being uh, relig um, at, at that time, the religious, religi religious convictions of regarding the word of the Lord, where the word of the Lord was imprisoned in this monasteries. And as time passed by, the Bible and the access to the Bible was restricted only to those who were part of the high uh, ranks of the church. However, the church, the, po the regular population didn't have access to the, to the word. And in the midst of this uh, environment where the Protestant Reformation took place, the Bible speaks of, about the the ones. The history tells that the ones that uh, tried to do the Reformation before the real Reformation, they they tried to bring the Bible to the surface. But the great uh, man of the Reformation is called Martin Luther, and we are going to know why Martin Luther is the great name of the Protestant Reformation in 31 of October in 1517. Martin Luther placed the, the thesis of uh, his reformation. And Rome uh, 
became aware of this thesis and the situation for Luther got much very serious and 1521 uh, Luther participated on the uh, on a meeting where he reaffirmed his convictions at that time at the same time in which he received the the, the order from a papal um, uh, government that he was being excommunicated. So then there was uh, a king, Frederick, this, the wise from Saxon, that he, he would rapture Martin Luther and he would bring him to a castle where he would spend a year on the castle of Wachtelburg and, and, he, and there he would translate the New Testament to Germany. So, in this way, uh, Europe was flooded with the word of the Lord. And it's, in fact, it's true that John Wycliffe he had translated the, the Bible from the version of Volcata into English. However, it was not uh, being developed, uh, the mobile press and the difficulty for the reproduction production of the, the Bible was very difficult. So, there was not... Uh, great spread of the word, but uh, by the time of Martin Luther, the science had been developed, uh, the, the modern press. That's why we praise the Lord, because the Bible translated into German, everybody was able to have access to the word of the Lord. And it's important to say that everything that God does, that God does through his word. Everything that God performs, he does through his uh, wonderful word and glorious word and all the 95 theses of Luther he placed on the cathedral of Luthenberg um, in the midst of those uh, theses we can say that four are the fundament, fundamental uh, theses like you to follow with me on the screen the formation of the 16th century amongst all of all the thesis what was became clear was the justification by faith so uh, the justification not by works but justification would take place by faith and the Bible as the only rule of faith and practice or in other words the scriptures would be the the rule book for the life of the Christian and salvation by grace like the word in Ephesians that says on chapter 2 verse 8 and by grace you are saved by faith this is not from you, it, a gift of God it doesn't come from works so that no one may glorify themselves so salvation is by grace, this is the top that we're going to in an opportune situation which is the priestlyhood of the Christian so we would like you to uh, remain on the text that, that therefore since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven Jesus the Son of God let us hold firmly to the faith we profess so when we speak about the priest we need to understand that the role of the priest begins in the Old Testament when the people of Israel leaves Egypt the Lord established that a tabernacle should have been made the word says that for 40 times it repeated in the Bible, in which Moses says, Do it according to the model that God showed me in the mount. So he's going to do the tabernacle, and the priest is going to be the one who is going to manage the tabernacle. So the priest was the mediator, the intermediary between God and the people of Israel. So in this way, this um, role of the priest who was the role of the intercessor, the one who offered the sacrifice, the gifts. So everything there was the role of the priest who did this mediation. So, but we need to understand something that is important for us. Sit with me. So let's go to the next slide. He spoke, he said that the priest of the whole testament was constituted by God. His role was exactly to do this mediation. And the high priest, now pay attention here, the high priest, only the high priest, he could enter once a year in a place called Holy of Holies. And the first portion here of the tent of the congregation was called uh, the Holy Place. The second part is was the Holy, the high, Holy of Holies. So we see uh, the connection between the high priest and uh, the Holy of Holies. Now here is the tabernacle. When Israel left Egypt, the tabernacle 
was exactly in the center of the 12 tribes of Israel in such a way that when the tribes they camped there were three tribes on each side of the tabernacle so what does it mean it means that the access to the tabernacle the access to the presence of God was equal to everyone because Jesus through him we uh, participate in tabernacle with God so Jesus is our tabernacle and through him that we come to God so the access to Jesus access to the tabernacle was equal to everyone so observe here here the priest he ministered in in this area called the exterior area and the tribes was camp were camped around it so this this is the altar the holocaust where the victim was sacrificed he was sacrificed the victim there he would bathe on the bronze uh, and then he entered then into the holy place in the second person which is the holy of holies when the priest entered here nobody would see him nobody was able to see him everybody saw him when he was here sacrificing the victim but when he entered the tent of congregation nobody would see him the priest had a, a garment that was very specific when he ministered here on this first area called the holy place where he ministered here were special garments. We're going to speak about them. He entered here in this place. He had to go through this big curtain so that we, he could enter into the Holy of Holies uh, where the, the Ark of the Covenant was there. But he can could only enter there once a year. It was the most important day of the Israeli calendar. It was the day of the in which the people of Israel had sought the their sins being brought by the highest, highest priest, uh, uh, being brought to, to God in order to be forgiven. And the most important day was the day when we were forgiven by Jesus, the day when we were accepted by Him, the day in which uh, the blood of Jesus washed us of all sins. <coughs> Whether uh, the Israel of God, something that the priest could do once a year, we can do all the time because the high, highest priest would enter in the Holy of Holies could not enter without blood he, he had to uh, put blood on the, the thumb of his right hand the thumb, no, on the, his big toe and on his right ear he had also blood to sprinkle over the Ark of the Covenant on, and the propitiation uh, pool Without blood, he would not enter into the Holy of Holies. So now we're going to read in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 20. Having brought this boldness to enter into the Holy of Holies through the blood of Jesus. So we only enter here in the Holy of Holies through the blood. We don't enter here in the Holy of Holies where the glory of God is, where is the power of God is, the glory of the Almighty. We can only enter here through the blood. So we're going to read a text in a letter to Hebrews. Having brought bread and boldness to enter into the Holy of Holies through the blood. <coughs> so the high priest entered only once a year. And the Christian, the Son of God, we enter every time that we plead for the blood of Jesus. We have access to the glory of God. To the throne of grace. To the blood of Jesus. Having both, my brother, having boldness to enter into the Holy of Holies through the blood of Jesus. And the Bible says, through the new and living path that was proclaimed to us through the Word, which is His flesh. So, flesh. So now we can see what took place in the cross of Calvary. When He goes to the cross of Calvary, He came from heaven. It was God that became man. He goes to the cross of Calvary to seal the victory of the church, to decree the victory of the church. And the Bible says that He went to the cross of Calvary and He placed on the cross of Calvary he nailed. He nailed the stamp of our condemnation. So there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ. So it opened up for us a new living path through his flesh. So now when he's in the cross, he will give a shout. And the shout of Jesus in the cross of Calvary was, Father, Father, I hand to you my spirit to, to your hands. And the Bible says that when he said this, the veil of the temple was ripped from top to bottom the veil of the temple is not ripped from bottom, from the bottom up because it was not the will of man it was not man who ripped the veil it was Christ who ripped the veil it was his blood 
The veil of the temple is ripped from top to bottom. What a wonderful thing, my brethren. So observe, my brethren. What was hidden here in the Holy of Holies, a place, something that only a high priest could see, would, could enjoy the glory of God, only once a year, the veil was ripped with the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, and all the mystery that was here in the Holy of Holies was unveiled. And now the access is free, so now we have free access. So today, Jesus, says the Word of God, is our High Priest. He took the role of High Priest uh, and also of Victim, because it's through Him, through His blood, that we have access to the Father. <coughs> you have High Priest that is in the presence of God, like this says, because we don't have a High Priest that cannot uh, empathize with our weaknesses. How wonderful. He knows that we are weak. He knows our limitations. He knows our, our imperfections. But we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are. Yet, he did not sin. He, was, he died without sin for you and I so that he could be the mediator between God and man. Hallelujah. I would like to invite the church to glorify the Lord now because the access to the Father is open. Jesus is our mediator. He our, our High priest that is empathized with us because he knows our weaknesses. Blessed be the, lo the Lord. Blessed the eternal mediator. Be blessed be the one who became man and took my place and died in my place. The death of Jesus was uh, a death that was, was a pl replacement death. He died in my place. He took the guilt that was mine. He became sin for me. He gave himself for my sin and for your sin. He opened up the path, that uh, a new and living path that give us now access to the throne of grace, to the glory of God, to the power of God. What is the blessing of God for man? And today, we have this mediator. Blessed be, be the Lord. And now, I want to show an important aspect that says that high priest would enter here only once a year. And he would to enter here dressed up with... Uh, um, dressed up with linen but on on the on the holy of holies who who would wear different garments and the rim of his garment there was a roman and uh and a is a ring so uh, around the there was a primary and uh, a bell so the board says that in, in the first they made the primary and then and then a bell and then another primary and then a bell around the garment of his gar garment. Why are you were explaining this, Pastor? When that woman that had a flow of blood that went to be with Jesus, the word says that she came from behind him and she knelt down and she would touch not on his shoulder, not on his hair or on his or his arm. He kneels down to put her hand on the rims of, of Jesus' garment. So the action of this woman was prophetic because she touched on the mes prophetic message that governs all the blessings for the church. Why is that? Because in the Old Testament, the primary and the, the bell, the Roman and the bell, why is that? The Roman uh, primary is a fruit when, when it's ripe the shell begins to crack and soon the interior opens up and you can see the interior. The Bible says that nobody touched Jesus before the time. So there are many texts in the Word of God that says it was not time so nobody imprisoned him. But when he came time and Peter tried to defend him, he said, Peter, I came for this moment. I came because Peter, the palmer, is ripe. Now it comes a moment for me to show my whole interior, or my grace to the sinner. So the palmer, speak of the sacrifice of Jesus, it took place spontaneously. Jesus didn't go to the cross because Judas betrayed him. Jesus didn't go to the cross because uh, the high pr the, uh, the high uh, ranks of the Jewish religion conspired against him. He went there because the Pomeran was uh, ripe and he's going to show all his power. He goes to the cross and now he's 
the main character of the salvation. He didn't go through Calvary. He was he who brought the crowd to the great spectacle of, of salvation. And now in the cross of Calvary, he's going to give a shout. The, the veil is ripped, and now everyone has access to the presence of God. So the Pomeranian speaks of the sacrifice of Jesus. And the bell, bell speaks, it was necessary because as the high priest was was here in this place, he would walk ministering. And the people of Israel was camp around in the tabernacle. It would not, they would not see the, the priest, but they knew that he was alive because of the sound of the bells. So now pay attention. The Pomeranian speaks of the sacrifice of Jesus and his death. And the bell speaks of his resurrection. So on the rim of the the garments of the high priest was a message. Uh, the palmer, he died. And the bell, he's alive. He's dead, but he's alive. He dead, but he's alive. And that's why the access is open to the throne of grace. Blessed be the, be the Lord. So the woman that had a flow of blood, he didn't ask authorization to Peter. He didn't schedule a, a time with a deacon or asked uh, uh, one of the, the followers of Jesus to uh, pray for her. She touched Jesus. He died for my sin, but he resurrected for my justification. And now we have access to this, complete access to this wonderful God and to Jesus. All the glory, all the honor, all the praise, because he is our mediator, eternal mediator. So let's go to the next slide. Jesus, our high priest, and the word says that he is not uh, according to according to the order of Melchizedek because uh, the ones that were from the order of uh, Aaron they died but he he's, he's from the order of Melchizedek he doesn't have beginning or end he comes from eternity to eternity and this right guarantees is guaranteed to us so and that's why in Revelation 1 6 says it was uh, kings and priests to God. So the access is complete. We have go access to God, direct access to God, to the throne of grace, uh, with the, to this powerful God. Let's go to the next slide. So we're going to see here, uh, what, like the whole congregation to see, uh, Jesus as the only mediator. Jesus, the only. Uh, Jesus, the only uh, unreplaceable mediator, and Jesus our intercessor. So let's read the text. Mediator. Hebrews 9.15. The whole congregation with me. So a mediator of the new covenant. So, so that intervening in death for the remission of the resurrection of the first tes uh, testament of the first covenant that were called so that they may have the promise of uh, eternal inheritance so that they are made mediator so that will be available to the church where he is our mediator what is mediation my brethren is our mediator because there are many conflicting events our sin put us in conflict with the Lord but he is mediator because through the blood of Jesus like this says on the letter to Romans we are in peace with the Lord he is our in Hebrews 7.22, because of this oath, Jesus has become the guarantor of a better covenant. The, the guarantor is the one that guarantees the death. He, I didn't have uh, a means to pay, but he spontaneously paid uh, for that. So let us continue. And, and Timothy, 1 Timothy 2.5, there is no other, there's no other mediator. He's the only mediator. And that's through him that we have access to the throne of grace, to the holy place. Let, read with me. First letter to Timothy 2, two verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus. He's also in our intercessor. First John. My children. These things I write to you so that you don't sin. If you ever, someone sins, have a love with the Father. Jesus, the just. He is the just. He died without sin. He is the just. Every lawyer has their own argument. And what is the argument that he uses before the Father? 
we are here. The Bible says that we have, we confess our sin, we sinned, we failed. But Jesus purifies of everything. The argument that he used, Father, he failed, but he died on the cross for him. I died on the cross for her. That's why he has access to your blessing. He can enjoy this power, your, your power and grace. My brethren, blessed be the Lord for this intercessor that is before the Father. How will we be given to this Almighty God? Now, I'm going to bring this up to a close on this topic with the priestly of the Christian. Reading the verse, verse the, of the one that we read. If you can show here in the projection, it will be good. Let's come, therefore, with confidence to the throne of grace. Can pray because you uh, can be confident because your prayer will be answered by the Lord. Do not pray until the Lord hears. Pray until the Lord answers. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us. Uh, the mercy does not fall upon me what I deserve, and the grace allows to come to me what I didn't deserve to help us in our time of need. This is the opportune time. Blessed be the Lord that will bless us every time our, we have bent the need to, to the honor and glory of His name, to Jesus, our praise and adoration for Him. And we are here, and His name may be glorified more and more as our knee bends because before the church is the complete access to the throne of grace. May God bless us and that brethren may close the service in the church, glorify the name of this God, and pray so that there are blessings to the entire people of God. I would wish everyone, therefore, the peace of the Lord Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The intermediary also are going to sing to the Lord. What is the song? I have a lamp.
Jesus' name, we just thank you and praise you, Lord, for his children, the intermediates, and the adolescents, Lord. And Lord, we always ask you that you will continue to protect them, Lord, deliver them from accidents and violence and sicknesses and diseases. We ask, Lord, that you always have angels surrounding them in the schools and their houses, uh, wherever they may be, Lord. We ask, Lord, that your presence be with them, Lord, and as they uh, focus and concentrate in their schoolwork, Lord, we pray and we ask you, Lord, that you bless them in their studies. We ask, Lord, that you would bring back into remembrance, Lord, everything that is taught from the teachers, Lord, or from the instructors. We ask, Lord, that you help them even uh, during their homework, Lord, that you bless them. Use them, Lord, in service, Lord, in this dark world into which we live. Sustain them with their families. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord for your message, for the teaching that we received this morning, so that we may give proper worth to this project of which we're inserted by, by your mercy. Sustain us until the day in which we'll meet with your sun in clouds, so that we can enter in the heavenly mansions to hear from the Lord. Come, beloved of my Father, to receive by inheritance the kingdom that is prepared for us. We ask, give us a victory in this, during this day. Use us to invite lives to come to know your salvation. This is a wonderful project. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. Before the brethren go home, don't forget to pass by the board that is there next to the water fountain with a list of and with the hours. There are only 15 minutes per person. Preferably use uh, an hour that is empty so that uh, by the end of the day, we have a list complete. Amen. May the Lord bless everyone, and I'll see you later on at 7.30. Peace of the Lord.